Car manufacturers these days claim that their cars are more reliable, safer, and more practical than they've ever been before. But in the actuality, just look around. You see recalls and problems with cars related to oil and fuel dilution, timing chain failures, coolant leaks, oil consumption, catastrophic engine failures, transmission issues, and the whole like. Then if cars are that unreliable, from my experience and that that we share on the channel, it's pretty clear to me that most cars nowadays don't have half the reliability that they once had. So let's review five of the key reasons why I believe modern day cars are not only not reliable, but I'm also going to help share with you at the end how long you should own them for and when you should actually dump them. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. The first problem has to do with modern day engines. Manufacturers are looking to make their cars more fuel efficient, more powerful, quieter. In the process of doing that, what they're causing is additional problems. Brand new Toyota Tundra, for example. They have the wonderful 5.7 liter V8 that they tossed out the back door, and now they have this three and a half liter twin turbo V6. There's already issues. Wastegate problems is one of the big ones. So they have to tear into the front end, remove the wastegates because those are the relief valves, the pressure relief valves when you see excess boost, it punts it out the back door. Whereas Toyota Toyota historically has been bulletproof. Now they're starting to see some of those issues. Some of the other problems, look here, in this Jaguar right here, it's right there. It's that device that we're looking at there. That's a turbocharger that takes exhaust air, spins it on the back end, and then of course force feeds a pressurized air back into the intake manifold, makes more power. So it makes more power with turbocharging. So generally manufacturers are downsizing their engines, going from, for example, a V6 down to a four cylinder, often a two liter by displacement, throwing a turbo on there. They're making just as much horsepower, sometimes more torque. And when most people drive them casually, they actually make much better fuel economy too. But that in fact is where things start getting expensive. Turbochargers, of course, there's cooling lines, oiling lines. There's more potential for leaks, but there's also more potential, another component that's on a bearing and can create heat. And as well, that in itself as a component will fail and it guaranteed will fail. Supercharging, turbocharging is a failure point. We also think about Hyundai and Kia and the Theta 2 engines. Of course, they had rod bearing issues and extra metal particulate in the oil cooling orifices, which reduce the capacity to preventatively oil the rod bearing. That basically means the rod bearings are overheating, hot spotting, and of course, they're catastrophically failing. A couple other disasters, of course, are some of the Ford EcoBoost products. Think about the Ford Escape. How about that 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine? Lots of problems there. Mixing coolant. I mean, that's just a disaster. BMW as well. In the mid 2000s, when they converted, they started putting turbochargers on some of their engines, particularly the tried and true inline six cylinder engines that they were known for that were notoriously dependable and powerful and silky smooth. They then go strap on a set of twin turbos to the N54 engine back in 2007 and unleash a whole host of a barrage of problems. Some of that was coupled, of course, with direct injection and turbocharging, but nonetheless, turbos actually did add a lot of problems to a lot of these vehicles. Other engine issues are still connected somehow to efficiency and actually manufacturing costs. But let's look under the hood right here of this Jaguar. Look, cooling system. BMW's known that they've got a lot of problems. Of course, look at they use these snap ring fittings. Snap it on, sure it's quick for installation, great at the factory, makes it go fast, and then they're keyed, so they're very efficient, and you can't get them wrong, and they snap right on. Of course, you got a vent line, but everything's very much plastic, 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 plastic rat ends, and of course, more plastic keyed fittings right there. That's the general consensus. And that too is where a lot of the manufacturers start going wrong. They start using too many snap together plastic cooling lines. BMW knows about that. Electric water pumps and thermostats and plastic cooling lines as well as plastic radiators are a big part of what's starting to go on with a lot of these vehicles. Sure, they're, they're recycling. However, they're guaranteed to start wearing out. They're going to start splitting and cracking from the hot cold cycles. Then they're going to start to leak. The problem is they're not cheap to buy. They're cheap to make. They're cheap to add on and they're cheap to assemble in the factory but they're not so cheap to replace a lot of these specialty cooling hoses are big bucks the manufacturers charge you accordingly bmw is not the only one as you can see jaguar and many other manufacturers are starting to adopt that whereas manufacturers for example like toyota you look under the hood of a brand new toyota camry and they still use a standard rubber hose with an all tension spring which is guaranteed to not leak and be super easy and cheap to fix when it does the second thing that actually causes cars to be very unreliable these days is the over complexity with the transmissions. And in this particular case, we go inside, we open that, and what we're looking at here, look at all this extra technology. Press this and look. 
then you have cars makers doing things like this. Why are you adding that extra piece? That's another point of failure. But otherwise, a lot of these manufacturers are still using transmissions like the ZF 8-speed automatic. That's actually a quite a reliable transmission. However, not everybody is. There's lots of other manufacturers that have decided to go with the CVT, continuously variable transmission. Why do you think Nissan and Infiniti took such a hit on reputation in the last few years? So bad, in fact, that they've actually reverted back in some of their latest models. For example, the Pathfinder is going back to a transmission that's a little more conventional with a torque converter style because the continuously variable transmission is actually, it's a belt. It's nothing more than an all-terrain vehicle type belt that's essentially on a couple of pulleys and it works great when it's new, but it kills the oil. The more power you put to it, throw towing duty on it and you've got a recipe for disaster. The problem is Nissan, Infiniti, Subaru's been installing CVTs as well, even Toyota and Honda, but, but a lot of it is the engineering on the front end Either way, the CVT transmissions are inherently unreliable. A lot of other manufacturers with the dual clutch transmissions, even BMW was using them for a while and they finally elected to go back to a full on ZF8 speed automatic just because they can tune it to shift almost as quickly as a dual clutch, but it's actually far more reliable, lower cost, smaller packaging, and generally a better, more usable transmission. So dual clutch transmission, CVTs, way too complex. What happened to the old four or five speed automatic transmissions that were very reliable? Even better, how about a manual gearbox? Sadly, those are a thing of the past, but as the complexity rises, the failure rate follows. The third is technology in general or the electrics that you'll find under the hood of a lot of these vehicles. Think about the latest from Jeep and they have the wonderful Tipum issue, the totally integrated power module that is notoriously known for failure. Get in a lot of those cars with some miles and some of them even with lower miles. You lose some of your instrumentation, you lose some of your controls to your mirrors and a lot of other features just disappear randomly and then maybe next time they come back. Well, that's probably your Tipum and a lot of Jeep problems are affiliated with some of those electric issues. Now that's just an example of what we're finding with a lot of these cars where they get just far too complicated for their own good rather than just using a good old-fashioned button, switch, or relay, and an output. No, there's way too much going on, but let's take a look in this car. It's no longer just about power windows and power mirrors. No, there's way more technology. For example, you got memory seats, power seats. You have other issues. Just ask Range Rover owners, the electric park brake right here that's known for failure. Right there you have a hill assist, extra technology. Right here you have a variety of different mode controls. Each one of those goes directly into the computer right down there. Heated steering wheel. Steering wheel controls in general just make so much technology buried into this little hub. Of course you got paddle shifters, that's a potential failure. Heated seats, charging stations, rising shifter knobs, electric tilt and telescopic. And then we have this big one right here. This is the big unknown. A lot of cars these days have a big infotainment system. Now they're great because you have things like navigation, stereo controls, heated seat controls, and all that technology is wonderful when it's new. Take that car for a test drive, it's awesome. But wait a minute, what happens if that infotainment screen fails? And they do. Well, then you're probably faced with a two or $3,000 repair bill. Think about this, one second. If you own that car, up to two, three years, you're fine. Warranty's gonna cover it. What if you own that car and it's seven years old and all of a sudden your infotainment system goes away? Well, in this Jaguar, that infotainment system actually controls all your heaters and cooling system, HVAC, infotainment. It actually functions some of the car. So you actually literally almost could not even drive that car without the proper infotainment system. Some cars are more integrated than others, but nonetheless, you're experiencing a huge bill. And could you imagine that faced with a vehicle that's depreciated so much, all of a sudden you've got to face a $5,000 repair just to get that electric component working again. We also can't forget a lot of these cars have digital dash displays, which this one does not, but that's a thing that's coming in fast and furious as well. And we also got to think extra technology, for example, hybrids. Look at that latest and greatest Mercedes C63S, wonderful car turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine, but now they've thrown a hybrid connection to it. So now you've added a whole pile of new technology on top of the conventional turbocharging and all the other tidbits that come with it. Now you're going to guaranteed experience some huge repairs when it comes time to actually fix it. Warranty time's wonderful, but wait till warranty's gone. Look out, you're in a world of hurt. Now the next issue is one that can impact reliability as well as longevity of a lot of these vehicles. And it can actually impact a lot of different parts and pieces. For example, on a BMW, it was one of these. On some cars, it has to do with tailpipe emissions. On other cars, it has to do with the way the transmission shifts or the way the engine fires and the amount of fuel that it consumes. In some vehicles, it's the amount of power it puts down, and then in others, it's just the overall efficiency can be changed by this one element. And that's software updates. 
Because what we're talking about, it's no different than your modern day cell phone. Every once in a while, your phone goes through an update, automatically makes some improvements overall. There's reliability, there's bugs that work out, and some changes that make the in this case, the vehicle or your cell phone much more reliable. If you don't take advantage of some of these updates, you can potentially see reduced lifespan, inefficiencies, reduced power and other issues and lower performance overall. Some of Honda's 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder engine oil dilution issues were solved with a little bit of a software update. How about Hyundai and Kia's Theta 2 engine where they actually had to install a knock sensor into the software to mitigate some of the failed engines or BMW's lack of a proper rear camera activation under certain situations. Lots of performance improvements, enhancements as well as reliability and safety elements can be impacted by this fourth item and neglecting to keep up on that is a surefire way to see an accelerated deterioration of that vehicle. So the fifth thing that actually reduces the lifespan of these vehicles and ensures that you guaranteed won't see these lasting very long is this simple cost to continue these things on down the road. And a big part of that has to do with service costs when dealers are charging about $200 a shop rate or even $175 for a generic brand. Think about a CVT transmission if they fail and they do frequently on the old JATCOs and you're dealing with a four or $5,000 repair. How about a turbocharger change out that might be a $3,000 repair if your dual clutch transmission and some of those specialty cars goes you might be dealing with a ten fifteen thousand dollar repair any particular specialty modules for example your digital display or your infotainment system might be two three thousand dollars a pop we won't even talk about other things that engine rebuild if it needs it because generally engines are more stressed these days because of the improved efficiency and performance so that's going to cost you once it goes big time think about a set of headlights this is not a cheap part if you ever damage that or it burns out that's going to be very very expensive big brakes a lot of modern day cars have do two or four pot calipers bigger brakes and the front suspension with the dual wishbone aluminum suspension parts tie rods control arms ball joints and all of that is guaranteed to cost you big big dollars just think about this thing when it's 10 years old and it's got 180,000 kilometers on it and the vehicle's only worth $6,000. Do you think you wanna be pouring in $6,000 in front end servicing because a front end car is getting all loose and wobbly and dangerous to drive? No, most owners of that car at that point will just decide to chuck this thing down the road because they can't afford continued high expense, high dollar repairs. So if I can offer some advice, because now these vehicles are far too complex. There was a time where you could literally own a small toolbox and a small OBD code reader and you'd be good to go and you could fix almost any problem. The problem is nowadays, cars are way more complicated than they've ever been. Parts are very, very expensive. And actually now you have to be a certified tech with 25 years of factory training and have a $50,000 piece of diagnostic equipment available to you to be able to fix some of these problems. The point is you either lease one of these vehicles and able to write off some of the losses on the depreciation and the lease costs towards a business or you buy and finance one of these vehicles for three to five years. Never go seven or six years because then you're past the point of where these vehicles become valuable. Which brings me to the next point. Don't own these vehicles beyond five years. And if you do, you definitely want to make sure you have Rock Auto, FCP Euro, or one of the others, and you're real great do-it-yourself repair person. And then you can fix a lot of the problems yourself. That's the only way to even think about possibly owning one of these complicated modern day vehicles. Otherwise, generally, none of them will last more than five years. Now, with all of that said, right there, check that out. The most reliable vehicles that are guaranteed to last over 500,000 miles. Yes, there are actually a few out there. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.